Welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and I'm going to be answering a question from uh, one of the Solomon papers from the C4 collection. And this question is in my P4 end of topic worksheet for vectors. It's question number six from my worksheet, question number eight from the Solomon B from um, the C4 collection of Solomon B. And this is a question where we are asked, first of all, to find the vector equation of a line which passes through the points A, B with position vectors of A and B given. And um, that's the first part of the question. It's quite a standard type of question in vectors. <clears throat> Find the vector equation of the line. So if we imagine there's a line, let's say this line L1, and it's passing through the points A and B, which have position vectors relative to the origin. So let's say that's the origin over here so I'm just it's always good to try to picture what's happening it helps you to realize so we know the vector from O to A and O to B so O to A is the vector given it says points A and B positions position vectors minus 3 3 and 2 so that's O to A minus 3 3 and 2 and we know the vector from O to B as well that's given as 7 minus 1 and 12. I like to write them in column form, it makes it easy for calculations. That's a vector O to B, and we have to find a vector equation for L. Okay, so to find the vector equation for this line, line one, we need two things. We need to have a the position vector of a point on the line. We have two points on the line, so we could use either of these two, and we have to know the direction of the line as well. And the direction of the line, we could, for example, use A to B or B to A if we want. Okay, so if we find, for example, what A to B is, now if I want to go from A to B, I have to go from A to O, and then from O to B. So it's like minus OA plus OB, or you could think of it as OB minus OA. And that will be basically these two subtracted, so it's 7 minus 1, 12, take away minus 3, 3, 2, gives you 7 minus minus 3, which is 10, minus 1, minus 4, which is minus 3, sorry, which is minus 4, and 12 minus 2, which is also 10. So we end up getting the vector A to B is going to be 10 minus 4, 10. Okay, that's a vector from A to B. Now what I can do now is I can... Um, so I have a direction of the vector and I also have a point of the vector. So I can say that my line 1 has equation R equals and I need the position vector of the point. So for example, I could take O to A. I could even take O to B if I want. It doesn't make a difference. It still be the same equation. So minus 3, 3, 2. And then I'm going to have plus X scalar. I'm gonna, I'll just use lambda times... Now what I can do here, because I can see that this is the same as 2 times 5 minus 2, 5. I don't have to have exactly the vector A to B. I can have any vector that's parallel to this line. Going, you know, it could be going in this direction, it could be going in that direction. And it doesn't have to be exactly from A to B. It could be any vector that's along this line. Now as I see there's a common factor of 2 in these, I think it will make it easier for my future calculations that I might need to use this to just have it in this kind of, you could say, almost simplest form. So this is a vector equation for line 1. I could have written, instead of minus 3, 3, 2, 7 minus 1, 12, the position vector of B, that's on the line. I could have written plus lambda times this vector here, 10 minus 4, 10. Or I could have done it the other way around, I could have done it like minus 5, uh, f uh, 2, and minus 5. So as long as you have a point on the line for this part, could be A, B, could be anything that's on the line. And you have a scalar times um, any direction that goes parallel to the line, then you will be on this line. You will have the equation of this line. Okay, this will be a vector equation for line one. So that's part A done. Okay, so now I'm going to go on to part B. Part B is quite a long question, so I'll do all on the next page. Okay, so part B, um, it tells us the line... L2 has this equation. So this is line L2. So I'll write down L2 and I'll write it in my column vector form. So you have um, no i's, 5j's, and minus 7k, 
plus mu times 1 minus 2, 7. That's line 2. So the point C lies on line 2 such that AC is perpendicular to BC. Show that one per possible position vector for C is I plus 3J and find the other. Okay, so what we can do here is we have our line 1, which we already kind of drew before. Okay, that's line 1. Okay, we have two points on line 1, A and B. Then it says there's another point C, which is on another line, which is called L2, and AC is perpendicular to BC. So, for example, let's, let's, say, let's say we can say that... Let me just make a perpendicular line like this, see if we can make it simpler. So I'm going to just draw something like this, and like this. Okay, so that's perpendicular. So let's say that C lies here along a line, and I guess I can make another similar kind of thing like this. That's also perpendicular. Okay, so that's, yeah, so let's say that this is line 2 then. Let me just draw it with a... Okay, so let's say this is line 2 that passes through these two points. So I've kind of just like done it so that they are perpendicular. That A says, it, says, it tells us that the, the AC is perpendicular to BC. So AC and BC will be perpendicular. And here AC and BC will also be perpendicular. So those are two possible positions for C. Okay, that's what we can uh, deduce from that, right? So now... It says, show that one possible vector for C is I plus 3J and find the other. Okay, so this is line 2 and this is line 1. So I know that AC is perpendicular to BC. So they've told us that AC is perpendicular to BC. Okay, so I can make something out of this. And I also know that C lies on this line. Okay, so first thing I'm going to call the coordinates of C, X, Y, and Z. And let's say we have our origin somewhere like over here. Say this is our origin. Okay, oops, our origin O. We can say that, for example, here, that this vector from O to A, this is the vector from O to C, and this is the vector from O to B. Okay, so I can now find the vector from A to C. Okay, if I know this is O to A and this is O to C, A to C is minus AO plus OC. So I can find what AC is. So I can say the vector from A to C is O to C minus O to A. So let me write that down first. That's from O to C minus O to A. Now O to C, I'm going to call it X, Y, Z. So this will be the vector X. Position vector will be X y z minus o to a which i already know from the previous part minus three three two so minus three three and two so this is going to give me the vector x plus three and y minus three and z minus two and i know the vector from b to c is going to be o to c minus o to b same kind of logic here. If I want to find the vector from <clears throat> B to C, okay, I've got to go from B to O, so my, minus OB plus OC. So this is going to be X, Y, Z minus the vector O to B, which we already know from the first part, 7 minus 1 and 12. 7 minus 1 and 12. So that's going to give me the vector X, minus 7, y plus 1, and z minus 12. So here we have these two vectors, a to c and b to c, and I know that they're perpendicular vectors. So I know when I multiply them together, I'm going to get a, a product, a dot product of 0. So if I do x plus 3 times y minus 3 
times z minus 2 dot product with x minus 7 and y plus 1 and z minus 12, I have to get a dot product of 0. So I can make an equation from this, and that is x plus 3 times x minus 7 plus y minus 3 times y plus 1 plus z minus 2 times z minus 12, all of that equals 0. Okay, so that's one kind of thing I've derived from this. I also know that the point C lies on line 2. Okay, so I can take my equation of line 2 and I can use that to um, make another equation. Let me just take that and put it down here. Whoops, what happened there? Something strange happened there. I think I took too much. Anyway, I'll just write it down. So line two is R0. R0 equals, um, sorry, R equals 0, 5, 7. So line two, R equals 0, 5, 7 plus, and they've got using mu for the scalar, for line two, 1 minus 2, 7. 1 minus 2, 7. And I know that upon this line is x, y, z. x, y, z is on this line. Okay, so I don't need the R uh, thing here. So I know from here I can see this is point C. Lying on this line, there will be a value of mu for which we'll find x, y, z. So I can say 0 plus mu equals x. So mu equals x. And 5 minus 2 mu equals y. And 7 plus 7 mu is equal to z. Okay, so I have now these three equations combined with this equation here. So what I can do is I can replace the x with mu, the y with 5 minus 2 mu, and the z with 7 plus 7 mu, and let's see what happens. So let me replace the, the x with mu. So I have mu plus 3 times mu minus 7 plus... Now, y minus 3, I'm going to replace the y with 5 minus 2 mu. So if I do that, I'll have 5 minus 2, which is 2. So I'll have 2 minus 2 mu in this bracket. And the other bracket will be y plus 1. So I'm going to have 5 plus 1, which is 6, minus 2 mu. Okay, that's that one. And then with the z, I'm replace the z with 7 plus 7 mu. So I'm going to end up with 7 mu. Okay, 7 plus 7 mu. Let me just make sure that's right. What? Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a minus 7 here. That's a, see, that's a problem. That's a minus 7. I wrote 7. That's a minus 7. Be careful. So that's going to be minus 7 plus 7 mu. Okay. I have to be very careful about that. See? That should be a minus 7. 0, 5, minus 7. I wrote a minus here, but it was on the line. Okay, so always be careful. I don't think I used that yet. Did I use that? Nope, I used it here for the first time. Yep, so that's fine. So minus 7, that's a minus 7 here. Okay, so just saves, saves uh, making a silly mistake just in, just in time. Have to be very careful. If one little minus sign messes up your whole question, so you've got to be careful. So there's a, that's a minus 7. Plus 7 mu equals z. Okay. So now we're going to, um, yeah, so I'm going to put that in, inside this equation here. So instead of z, I'll put minus 7 plus 7 mu. So that will give me 7 mu minus 9. And then instead of z again, minus 7 plus 7 mu. So I'll have uh, 7 mu minus 19. And all of that has to equal zero. So now I've got an equation. It's quite long here, but um, this is worth eight marks altogether. And this equation has only mu's in it. So now if I expand all these brackets, I'll end up with the equation will be like a quadratic in mu. We'll have mu squareds in there. So that, that kind of makes sense to find two values of mu. It says, you know, find one possible position vector and find the other. So two values of mu will give me two possible position vectors 
so that's why we've got a quadratic here so let's now expand this you're going to have mu squared minus 4 mu plus minus 21 you have to be very careful with these calculations one little mistake messes up the whole question so mu squared minus 4 mu minus 21 and here i'm going to have plus i'll have 12 then i'll have minus 4 mu minus 12 u which is minus 16 mu yeah, minus 4 mu minus 12 mu yeah and plus 4 mu squared and then i'm going to have 7 times 7 which is 49 mu squared and 7 times 19 it's going to be negative 7 times 19 that's going to be 70 plus 63 i think that's uh, 133 mu um, and then I have minus 63 mu. Yeah, nine, minus 63 mu. And then I have minus 9 times minus 19, which is plus 9 times 19. That's 90 plus 81. Okay, just make sure. Make sure what that's going to give us. Then I have 9 times 19. 171. Okay, so that's 171. And that's positive. Right, and that's equal to zero. So now let's see, we got, we got u squared, 5 mu squared, 49 mu squared. That's 5 plus 49, that's 54 mu squared. That's the mu squared's done. We've got minus 4 mu, minus 16 mu, that's minus 20 mu. Minus 20, and that's going to be minus 196. Let's have a look. Let's just make sure that we do it right. I'm going to mess up here. So we got minus 4, minus 16, minus 20. So we have minus 20. And then we've got to take away from that 133. We've got to take away from that 63. That gives you minus 216 mu. Minus 216 mu. And then for the constants, we have minus 21 plus 12. That's minus 9 minus 9 plus 171 so 171 minus 9 which gives you 162 plus 162 equals 0 now let's see this if we can we need to factorize and solve this um, let's just hope that each of these is divisible by 54 that will make life really easy I think this must be 4 times 54 let's see 54 divide 162 by 54 see what we get we get 3 okay that's 3 yeah, of course so that's plus 3 this must be 4 yeah so I'm in so we've got 216 divided by 54 that should give us 4 yes okay that's nice and easy now and we can you get to a stage like that after such long calculations all right and you see that it comes out like this you think okay you know you know that you've you've kind of done the right thing because if it came out as a weird numbers it still might be right but you know it's kind of um you know nice when it comes in these easy numbers because you're kind of sure that it must be on the right tracks so anyway so now you've got mu minus and mu minus so you're going to have multiply to give you three add to give you four minus three and minus one so you can say mu is equal to three and mu is equal to one so now we have the two values of mu. If I put them into the equation of line 2, all right, it should give me the coordinates of C. So let me see what happens. We have um, um, 0, 5, 7. So we know that for line C, R equals 0, 5, 7 plus mu times 0, 5, minus 7. Don't make that mistake again. Um, plus mu times 1, minus 2, 7. 1 minus 2 7 and we know that mu is equal to either 3 or 1 okay let's try 1 first and when we put 1 in there when mu is equal to 1 we have r is equal to 0 5 minus 7 plus 1 times 1 minus 2 7 and that's going to give you 1 and you have 5 minus 2 which is 3 I have minus 7 plus 7 which is 0 and i think that's exactly what we had to show Yep, so that means 
O to C, one of the possible positions is 1, 3, 0, so that's I plus 3J. That's what we had to show. And then the other one is when mu is equal to 3, so R is equal to 0, 5, minus 7, plus 3 times 1, minus 2, 7. Now that's going to give you 0 plus 3, which is 3, 5 minus 6, which is minus 1, and minus 7 plus 21, which is 14. So the other possible uh, position vector of C would be 3i minus j plus 14k. So th that's the answer to part B. Okay, so that was a long question. And you have to be very careful not to make silly mistakes, as we almost did there. Okay, um, leaving out a minus sign will mess up the whole question, you see. So you have to be very careful in these vector questions. One little minus sign will change everything. All right, so it worked out in the end, but you have to be careful. That's why it's good to keep checking that you copy things down correctly. So that's part C, and then part uh, that's part B. Now for part C. Okay, so for part C, we're told to assume that C has position vector I plus 3J, and we have to find the area of triangle ABC giving answers in the form K root 5. Now remember, we know that uh, the vector AC and BC are perpendicular. Okay, so say this is A and this is B and this is C. We know that this is, forms a right angle triangle. Okay, so they have a right angle triangle here between A, B, and C. Okay, so say this is A, and say this is B, and say this is C, this is a right angle. So I know the vector from A to C, okay, is perpendicular to the vector B to C. So I know that um, if I find the area of this triangle, I can use, I mean, to find the area of the triangle, I can use a half times a base times a vertical height. I can think of this as a height, and this is the base. So if I do a half times the magnitude of AC, times the magnitude of BC, I will have found the area of this triangle. So I need to find the magnitude of AC and BC. Okay, so I know, um, I need, therefore I need to find the vectors AC and BC. Now A to C, as we discussed in the last part, is O to C minus O to A. Okay, and O to C we now know is, they want us to use this one, which is 1, 3, 0, and O to A we know from the earlier part is minus 3 3 2 so now I can find the vector from A to C is going to be 1 minus minus 3 which is 4 3 minus 3 which is 0 and 0 minus 2 which is minus 2 that's a vector A to C so the magnitude of A to C is going to be given by the square root of 4 squared which is 16 plus 4 which is the square root of 20 okay and I know that the vector B to C is O to C minus O to B, which is um, O to C again is 1, 3, 0, minus an O to B, we already know again from the last question, which is 7 minus 112. So this is going to give me the vector minus 6, 4, and minus 12. So therefore, the, the magnitude of vector from B to C is going to be the square root of 36 plus 16 plus 144. Okay, so that's going to give us what? So we have 36 plus 16 plus 144. That gives 196. I think that gives us an exact value. 14. That gives me exactly 14. And the square root of 20, if I find the uh, um, simplified third version, that's like for 2 root 5. Okay, because 4 times 5 is 22 root 5. So therefore, the area of what we need, which is triangle ABC, okay, and they want it in exact form, is going to be 14 times 2 root 5 times a half. A half times base times height, that's going to give me 7, that, well, that cancels with that, so I'll end up with 14 root 5. Okay, 14 root 5, and that's, you know, in the form we need, where we can see k is equal to 14. Okay, 14 times root 5, because you have a half times a base times a height. And there we have it. That's the answer for part C of this question. And, you know, it was a quite a long question. But, you know, we got there in the end. So here we have um, 
other videos from this paper or from the Solomon B from the C4 collection as I do them will be found on um, which was, will be found in the playlist that should appear here and other questions from vectors in P4 you can find them in the playlist that should appear in this region on the top of the page you'll have a card which takes you to another um, P4 paper thank you for watching and see you soon